This video is to demonstrate the pulmonary exam. So just like any other examination, it's going to start with a general inspection of the patient. You want to sit how the, see how the patient is seated on the table. Are they comfortable? Are they breathing comfortable? Are they requiring any extra effort to breathe, such as use of accessory muscles of respiration? Are they requiring any special posturing in order to aid breathing? You'll also want to inspect their mouth, look for evidence of pallor or evidence of cyanosis. Next, you want to inspect the position of their trachea. So if you could just lower your gown a little bit for me. So you want to look in the neck and see if the trachea appears to be midline within the neck, or if it is tugged or pulled one direction or the other. Uh, in someone who has large muscles or uh, increased amount of subcutaneous fat, you may not be able to see this easily, so you'll want to palpate the position of the trachea in the neck. So once you've completed the inspection of the trachea, you want to do a general inspection of the chest uh, conformation as well. So with the patient's gown completely removed, you want to look at the not only the medial lateral directions of the chest, but also the anterior posterior dimensions of the chest wall, so that you can have some estimation as to whether or not the patient is, for example, barrel chested. Once you've completed a full inspection, then you want to move on to palpation of the chest. We generally don't do a full um, palpation of the chest wall, what we do is palpate the areas of any visible abnormalities or any areas of pain or discomfort that the patient is having. So you want to do a general palpation in those locations looking for evidence of reproducible tenderness. Once you've completed that, you'll move on to percussion, which I will demonstrate um, from the posterior chest wall. We're going to demonstrate the majority of the pulmonary exam on the posterior chest wall. Uh, the first thing you want to do is assess thoracic expansion because you want to make sure that the chest is expanding symmetrically. So what you want to do is place your hands so that your thumbs are approximately the level of the 10th rib with your fingers sort of loosely grasping the outer part of the chest. And then bring your fingers together so that you develop a little bit of a fold in the skin. Now ask the patient to take a deep breath and let it out. And what you're watching for is for your thumbs to be moving apart to approximately an equal degree to show equal thoracic expansion. So the next technique that we're going to want to use for pulmonary exam is percussion. Percussion is a technique where we are going to generate a sound um, and the tone of that sound will give us some idea of what's happening in the tissue underneath. The methods in which we do this is going to involve placing our finger firmly against the chest wall. You want to make sure that your knuckle is the part that's sort of firmly pressed. You can use your other hand and gently, well, firmly strike that same location. The tone that I hear will give me some idea as to how much air versus how much fluid is in the tissue underneath. So normal lung should have sort of a resonant sound to it. If it's fluid filled, then that sound will become more dull. So fluid filled as in consolidation like a pneumonia. Um, or if it's completely air filled, such as the lung is collapsed, that sound will become more tympanic in nature. The locations in which we're going to want to do the percussion, we want to make sure that we are not over something that will obstruct the sound waves. So for example, I wouldn't want to percuss directly over the bone of the scapula because that would dampen the sound waves that I'm trying to generate. Also, we want to make sure we're over the lung field, so directly in the midline is where we're going to find the spinal column, so that again would not be an appropriate place to percuss. So the best places to percuss are sort of between where the major muscles are of the paraspinal muscles and the scapula. So this general location on each side of the chest. We also want to make sure that we're comparing the same thing. So we want to compare right to left. There are different levels of air versus blood in the lung when you're comparing the upper part of the lung fields to the lower part of the lung fields. The sound might be slightly different. So I want to make sure I'm comparing directly right to left. So we want to use a side to side approach when we're doing this percussion. Now you'll notice that I've used three different locations because I want to be able to get, make sure upper, middle, and lower lung fields on the posterior projections. Um, however, if there's any suggestion of abnormalities uh, based on the patient's symptoms or you found an abnormality while doing the exam, you want to make sure you do more levels. So finally, we'll want to move on to auscultation of the chest. So for auscultation, one of the things you want to make sure the patient is doing is breathing deep enough for you to be able to hear the sounds. You want them to breathe with their mouth open and to take a full inspiration and expiration. If they're breathing only through their nose, then number one, you won't have as much airflow, but number two, you'll hear just the sounds of the upper airway. 
If they're taking too large of a breath, again, all you'll hear are the sounds of the upper airway and potentially even some vocalizations that come as part of such a large inspiration. So we generally instruct the patient to just take a full breath with an open mouth. The next thing you want to make sure is that you're listening through the entire respiratory cycle. So you want to be listening from the beginning of inspiration to the end of expiration, because some of the abnormal sounds you might hear might be at those extremes of the respiratory cycle. Your auscultation will occur in the same locations that we just did percussion. Again, this is a minimal number of locations to listen to. If there are any abnormalities, or if there is a suggestion of an abnormality based on the patient's symptoms, you'll want to listen in more locations. So again, I'm gonna ask you to breathe in and out through your mouth with your mouth open and just take full breaths for me. You'll notice that I did the same side-to-side -side approach that we did with percussion for the same reason. The breath sounds can be slightly different when you compare the upper part of the lung fields to the lower part of the lung fields because of that differences between air and blood. One of the techniques that you can use is to ask the patient to take a full breath each time they feel your stethoscope place on the chest wall so the patient doesn't end up panting rapidly um, during the breathing process. So the same techniques of auscultation and percussion that we use on the posterior chest, we would also want to be able to use on the anterior and lateral chest walls. Uh, so percussion and auscultation locations are essentially the same. At the barest minimum, you want to listen to at least two locations on the anterior chest, so you can get both the right and left superior lobes of the lung. You want to listen above the major muscle groups in the chest wall, as well as above the heart on the left. Um, this is a minimum number of locations for a screening exam. If you hear any abnormalities or the patient has any symptoms, you want to listen to more locations on the chest. If you suspect any lateral um, areas of abnormality, you also want to be able to get locations on the lateral chest wall. So I'm going to ask you to raise this arm for me. So we want to be on the mid-axillary line, approximately the fifth intercostal space. You want to percuss and auscultate in that location both here on the left as well as over here on the patient's right. On the patient's right, this is going to get the middle lobe. On the patient's left, this will get the lingula. You can lower your arms. 